2652 times your amperage on the capacitor divided by the voltage on the capacitor gives you your microfarads. Alright, today we've got two train units here on a convenience store. This one right here is required 10 degree subcooling, 14 on it, has a variance of 3. This one, same thing, rated for 10, but running 28. Appears we might be overcharged. I was wondering if we had something intermittent going on because everything was looking pretty normal for the most part. Fan motors are rated for 1 amp. So we're pretty good on that. I'd say we're probably overcharged. It's our biggest issue when it was hotter. That pressure probably hopped up there a lot higher. That's 120 condensing temperature and I think we're about 80 out here. So we're just a touch over. We're going to take some out and see how she starts to react. Superheat's okay. This is a TXV system, so it's countering it, but it's working that compressor a lot harder than it needs to. Condenser's all clean. So we got her hooked up. Everything's zeroed out. Start dumping a little liquid into it. So we've removed about a pound and four ounces. Amperage dropped down to 11.5. Ambient's 85 out here. Tens are required, give or take three degree variants. We'll let her stabilize for a bit. We've got 10 degrees with a variance of three, like I was saying. All right, so I already checked the capacitors when I was here last, and I replaced the one over here. So when you aren't 100% sure what's going on and acting up, I mean, you start checking everything. I start checking amperages, voltages, cross contactors, everything I already pretty well done on the service, but now obviously something's acting weird, especially when it's running. So this is rated for seven and a half uh, microfarad with a six uh, percent variance. We checked it under load. We had 277 volts and 0.7 amps. So 0 0.7 times 2652 divided by 277 volts comes out to a 6.7 microfarad. So we're under on our microfarad, so that could be causing some drag on the motor. Let's go ahead and check that out. The amperage on it though was right at 1 amp, so 0 .8, 0 0.9 to 1 amp, which is exactly what the motor is rated for. We're going to go ahead and change that. We've got our subcooling right where we want it at. Double check our power box here, make sure all of our connections are good, nothing's loose. I like to check it ahead of time. It's rated for 7.5 and right at 7.5. And I've checked my meter against my 87.5 flute. So I don't always trust some of these amp clamp ones. Power is off, as always. Train professionals, don't be going in here playing in here if you aren't one. So let's see what this thing tests out at. Now this is a little interesting. So like I said, I tested these out, but I didn't test them under load. 7.2, it's rated for 7.5. So it tested out fine on the meter, but I did not test it under load. When I did this service, it was cold outside, so I couldn't really check the refrigerant pressures. Now today, we're, like I said, 85. I mean, that tells us that either the math is wrong or, the, or it doesn't hold up under load. So I would go with it doesn't hold up under load. So there's your 2652 times your amperage on the capacitor. Divided by the voltage on the capacitor gives you your microfarads. You can always check out that redfish meter. That's one of the few I've seen out there that can actually check it. And uh, I could have checked my uh, power factor with my uh, amp probe meter. So let's go ahead and kick this back on, recheck our refrigerant pressures. Hopefully it didn't affect anything. Because like I said, the amperage on the uh, fan motor was fine. So my thought process is maybe the motor was dragging a little bit and that would slow it down, and then that would make the head pressure go higher. So let's go ahead and see where we're at here in a second. While we're waiting, go ahead and recheck that amperage. Still at one amp. So right at our max. Now for giggles, 
Let's recheck this capacitor. Now we're at 0.7, about pretty much the same amperage as we had before. Pulled away from the contactor. A magnetic field on some meters can really screw with them. Now we're at 0.8. That's the interesting thing of these flukes. I noticed that it takes its time to get where it's got to go, but when it gets there, it's accurate. My amp probe is a little bit off sometimes. See how slow it is? And it'll hit eight here in a second, probably. Yep. So the amperage actually is a tenth of an amp higher. And check voltage. 2277. That's the same voltage as we had before. Okay, so I did the math real quick. 0.8 amps times that 2652, then divided by the 276 volts comes out to point comes out to 7.6 blah 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 so let's just say 7.6 and measured in a 7.5 so under the load that tenth of an amp there made most of the difference it's not much so I a million times have rushed 410a and you'll check it like I am right now at 8.5 we'll be like oh gotta go grab some refrigerant come back get your tank all set up everything good to go next thing you know you're where you need to be so we were shooting for 10 let this run for a little longer I guarantee it'll be right back at it again all right so we're checking the power factor we're on the common wire of the motor we're on l1 l2 the voltage going to the motor and our power factor now is between a 1 and 0.98 one's perfect so 0 0.98 0 0.99 usually they're rated like 0.95 so that capacitor is checking out pretty dang good so we're good on that out of curiosity, let's see what my amperage is. Now, well, 0.99, so it's pretty much right in line with my fluke. So, uh, 0.99, it would round up to one. Not bad. This is the 50, uh, the 52 nav. It's not. It's a good little meter. It just got. It's got so many goofy things on it. I mean, basically, like I said, this thing's got. AC and DC amps, it's got wattage, uh, power factor, uh, frequency, frequency through the clamp, but it gets kind of goofed up depending on the amperage on the uh, frequency. It's got phase rotation, uh, it had a lot of crap on it, so the only problems I've had with it was like the battery door. And then no place to put a magnet, so I had to come up with this jerry-rigging thing here. And it's got the light there, which is kind of nice. And it's good for, I think it, uh, it's Cat cat's, uh, cat 3 up to 1,000 volts, and Cat 4 for 600. So it's actually more safe than my 902 FC here. But you can just tell the difference in the quality. This thing, they're both made in China. Yeah, they're so embarrassed they don't even put the where it's made at. It says Taiwan on the package. Same thing with Fluke. They don't they don't like to put it on there. They charge you like USA prices, but they don't don't make it here. So jumping back up here to the subcooling, we're at nine. Head pressure is just a touch lower, but like I said, it's still coming in. Let it run for a little bit yet. Even at that, we're technically in speed, it's back. Okay, so we added two ounces back. Two measly ounces put us right back at 10.4. So it's still almost a pound and a half over. The uh, capacitor issue there, nothing stands out though. None of this would have probably created a humongous issue, but it wasn't right. And when we got up to say 95, Definitely would have put it under a heavier load, would have worked the compressor over, especially since it was doing better now that today was a lighter load. Still got to check temperature ice across the coil, but as far as the outside, I mean, there's some chance for you guys to see under load versus testing it out. Under load obviously makes a difference. Before we head back in, for you new guys, this is why I like the ball valves. So I'm going to valve off my high side here. And dump that back into the unit. So the only thing that'll be left is some vapor in that hose, even though I use six foot hoses. Elementary to most, but just want to point that out. I do the same thing whether it be a small one, but that's also why I make sure I purge each hose out through my middle hose. That way I'm void of any contaminants or non-condensables out of my hoses. 
don't forget to tighten up your caps. I don't know how many systems I go on, they get hand tight and nobody tightens them any further. And you don't have to go stupid tight, just a little bit. They usually say an eighth of a turn, I believe. Snug it up and then eighth of a turn. That's all it takes, it's brass. Brass is soft, you'll smash it. The other thing sometimes I'll check is the uh, caps on the uh, unit itself, which uh, it's got a funny looking nut. So that one there, and that one there is a little bit loose. So got them both there. Also guys, when you have something random like this and you're trying to narrow it down, what I'll do a lot of times is I'll come out with the manager and show them where the units are at so they know which ones to look at. I'll ask them, was the fans running? Did the unit feel like it was running? Did it seem like it was blowing on the inside? The more information you can get from them, the better you can build your case. Everything is detective work here, especially when it's not cut and dry and there's a dead body, a dead air conditioner laying on the floor. You've got to go through and get all the clues and question the witnesses, so to speak, to get the case built as to what's wrong. So a lot of times it's just collecting clues. So call us the uh, Dr. HVAC or the lawyers of HVAC, I guess. We definitely are removing some humidity out of the air. It goes up and then to the uh, unit up here. Now I went ahead and checked the uh, thermostats, made sure they can't turn them down any lower than 65. The way we do stuff around here, run it in metal, then we insulate it. You can see this obviously takes a lot more time and effort to run it in hard pipe. So we've got some makeup air right there. So we're bringing in 100% outside air when it does run, which could be causing us some issues. Close it a little bit. And that's on a damper. So I don't know how they got that wired. Take a look and see. Yeah, it's definitely powered open. Like I said, I'm just going to limit it down a little bit. You can see it's cutting it down some. That's gonna help a little bit. This unit here has finally came on. All right, so we got 55 degrees there. It's off the run and around the corner. I'm gonna check that back here. This has kind of got a mix of makeup air, the return air, just kind of get more of an accurate reading. 65, 75, let's just say 19 degree drop. So that's pretty normal. Let's go here and see what our other one's got. And this is the back one here, coming down, going through the 90. And we got 54.8. So they're both performing about as good as you could hope for. These are both ECM motors on them. So I'm gonna say, unless something weird's going on between a little bit overcharged, a little extra outside air coming in, then being right by the front door, because this is a convenience store, all those things combined together, you know. We don't have anything leaking, filters are clean, everything outside is clean. I'm gonna say we're gonna roll with it. I did program the thermostats so they can't go no lower than 65, which I prefer about 68 or 69, but I don't wanna go too low. That's caught me in the back before. So I'm gonna wrap this one up. We'll just uh, have them play it by ear, see how it does, and then we can kind of go from there. Mm -hmm.